Hi, today we are going to discuss anatomical terminology. In this session, we are going to cover anatomical positions of the body, positions or postures of the body for learning anatomy or during clinical examination and performing various surgical procedures. We will also discuss various planes of the body, some MCQs at the end of the session or for revision and assessment. Now, what is anatomical position of a cadaver? It refers to the pose in which a person is standing upright with face and eyes facing forwards, arms hanging by the side with palms facing forwards, feet parallel and toes facing forwards. The term is used in medicine and related fields when referring to the position of body parts in relation to each other. Teaching an assessment in anatomy starts with anatomical position. For example, to describe anatomical position of the stomach, we should know location of the stomach, ends of the stomach, borders and surfaces of the stomach and also relations of the stomach. In this diagram, stomach has been put in normal anatomical position with its upper end facing upwards lower and facing downwards and to the right it is lesser curvature facing to the right and greater curvature facing to the left and posteriorly stomach rests on body of the pancreas now if we change the position of the stomach upside down description of it is borders and surfaces and anterior and posterior relations becomes difficult as shown in this figure the stomach is not in the anatomical position, so it is description becomes difficult. Now, what are the various positions and postures of the body in anatomy or in clinical examination? In dissection hall, anatomical position is used to study anatomy. In clinics, these positions are used for clinical examination. In theatres, patient is kept in various positions or postures for performing surgical procedures. What is supine position? In this position, a person is lying on back with face directed upwards as shown in this diagram. Opposite of the supine position is prone position. The person lies on abdomen with face directed downwards as shown in this figure. Other positions are right lateral recumbent position when patient is lying on his right side and left lateral recumbent position when the patient is lying on his left side lithotomy position commonly used in gynecology in this position the person lies with hips and knees semiflexed thighs abducted and feet straight what are various planes of body and what is their importance in cross-sectional anatomy? In present era of cross-sectional anatomy, CT scan and MRI are useful tools for the study of anatomy after X-ray. These investigations have revolutionized the field of medicine not only by making understanding of anatomy easy, but also helping medicos in locating origin or spread of a benign or malignant lesion and their staging and finally management. Thus our future generations of doctors should be given early exposure to cross-sectional anatomy at the beginning of career so that its understanding becomes easier in clinical classes. The various planes of the body are coronal plane also called frontal plane. It is a vertical plane running from side to side, divides body or any of its parts into anterior and posterior portions. Sagittal plane is also called lateral plane. It is a vertical plane running from front to back. It divides the body or any of its parts into right and left sides. Axial plane also called transverse plane is a horizontal plane. It divides the body or any of its parts into upper and lower parts. Upper part is called superior and lower part is called inferior in anatomical terminology. They are also called cranial and caudal. Cranial means towards the head and caudal means towards the tail. Median plane. Median plane is a sagittal plane through the midline of the body that divides the body or any of its parts into right and left halves. As shown in this diagram, mid-sagittal plane 
divide his body into two symmetrical halves right and left it is also called median sagittal plane remember mid sagittal plane divides the body into two symmetrical halves because it passes through midline of the body and these two parts are mirror images of each other it is also called median sagittal plane now if we take the human body and pass a plane through its midline in anterior posterior direction this plane is called mid sagittal plane it divides body into two symmetrical halves right half and left half Now what is transverse plane? Horizontal plane because it passes parallel to the horizon that is parallel to the ground. It divides the body or an organ into two parts. One part lying above the organ that is called the superior. The part lying below the plane is called inferior or caudal. Superior one is also called the cranial that stores the head. Now what is coronal plane? It is also called frontal plane of the body it is a vertical plane the plane is at right angles to sagittal and horizontal plane it is also called frontal plane of the body it is a vertical plane running from side to side divide his body or any of its parts into anterior and posterior parts the plane is at right angles to sagittal and horizontal plane it divides the body into anterior part which lies in front of this plane and posterior part which lies behind this plane as shown in this diagram a coronal plane passes through the head and neck divides it into posterior part which lies behind this plane and an anterior part which lies in front of this plane so the various planes of the body are transverse plane which is also called horizontal plane passing parallel to the horizon divides the body into superior and inferior parts a coronal plane which passes from side to side and divides body or its parts into anterior and posterior parts and a sagittal plane which is an anterior posterior plane divides the body into right and left halves or parts so the planes of the body are coronal or frontal plane horizontal or transverse plane sagittal or longitudinal plane now sagittal plane can be further divided into median sagittal plane which passes through the midline of the body and divides the body into two symmetrical halves parasagittal plane any plane which lies parallel to the sagittal plane is called parasagittal plane now let us come to the terms related to the moments of joints now what is flexion as shown in this diagram flexion is defined a moment at a joint where two flexor surfaces come in approximation and angle of the joint decreases. For example, if we talk about the upper limb, moment is up and we take elbow joint into consideration. It is a hinge variety of synovial joint where moment is take place at transverse axis. The possible moments are flexion of the joint and extension of the joint. Now see what happens in the flexion in the flexion of the joint the anterior surface of arm and forearm which represents the flexor surface during flexion these flexor surfaces are approaching each other and what happens to the angle of the joint initially the angle of joint was obtuse say it was 180 now after flexion this angle has become acute so flexor surfaces are approaching each other and the angle of joint decreases after flexion, if we extend the joint, what happens at the elbow joint? Again, the angle of the joint increases and extends the surfaces, which represent the posterior surfaces of our arm and forearm. They are approaching each other. Now, let us go to this slide. So, in flexion, two flexor surfaces come in approximation and angle of the joint decreases. As shown in this diagram, ventral aspect of arm and forearm they are approaching each other and the angle of joint decreases from say 180 to 45 in contrast in extension two flexor surfaces move away from each other and angle of joint increases and the flexor surfaces move away from each other you can also say that extensor surfaces are approaching each other 
Again, as shown in this diagram, during fluxion, the angle of the joint decreases and fluxor surfaces are approaching each other. On the right side of this diagram, you can see fluxor surface being separated from each other and the angle of joint increases. Simply, you can say fluxion is to bend at a joint or to reduce the angle and extension is to straighten at a joint or to increase the angle for example from 90 degrees to 180 degrees. Now what is abduction and what is adduction? Again we will go to these two diagrams. Abduction is a moment where a limb moves away from the median plane. For example, abduction taking place at the shoulder joint, the limb is now moving away from the median plane and in adduction, limb moves towards the median plane. As shown in this diagram, the moment is taking place at shoulder joint. During abduction, the limb moves away from the median plane and during adduction, limb moves towards the median plane. In case of the digitus, adduction is defined moment of the digitus away from its axis passing through the center of middle finger. In case of the hand, moment of the digitus away from axis passing which passes through the center of the middle finger is defined as abduction. As shown in this diagram, axis of the joint passes through the center of middle finger and during abduction, digitus on either side move away from the central axis. And what happens during adduction? Again, axis is represented by a plane passing through center of the middle finger. Now, two lateral and medial digits move towards the central axis. Now, what is supination and what is pronation? Supination and pronation occur at superior and inferior radio ulnar joints. In anatomy, we say king is pronate, whereas the beggars supinate. So pronation is defined as rotation of the forearm and hand so that the palm faces backwards and downwards. Supination is defined as rotation of forearm and hand so that palm faces backwards or downwards. So we will place the hand in normal anatomical position. Now the palm faces backwards and downwards. This moment is called pronation and it occurs at superior and inferior radio ulnar joints. It is easy to remember in anatomy we say king is pronate. In contrast, rotation of forearm and hand so that palm faces forwards or upwards. Now we will rotate the forearm so that the palm faces forwards and upwards. This moment again occurs at superior and inferior radio ulnar joints and it is easy to remember beggars supinate. King is pronate and beggars supinate. As shown in this diagram, in supination palm faces upwards and in pronation palm faces downwards. Supination is to rotate forearm so that the palm faces forwards and pronation is to rotate forearm so that the palm faces backwards. Inversion and eversion. These moments occur at subtalar joint. In eversion, plantar surface of the foot turns outwards and laterally. In contrast, in inversion, plantar surface of the foot turns inwards and medially. Both moments occurring at subtalar joint. Usually students in examination get confused and they write inversion and eversion occurs at ankle joint. What is plantar flexion and dorsiflexion? Dorsiflexion decreases the angle between the leg and the dorsum of the foot. Whereas plantar flexion decreases the angle between the back of the leg and the sole of the foot. During dorsiflexion, dorsum of the foot and anterior aspect of the leg approach each other and the angle between the two decreases. In plantar flexion, the angle between sole of the foot and back of the leg decreases. In other words, they approach each other. Again shown in this diagram, during dorsiflexion, dorsum of the foot and anterior aspect of the leg approach each other and the angle of the joint decreases. During plantar flexion, sole of the foot and back of the leg approach each other and the angle of the joint decreases. During eversion, sole of the foot faces laterally and during inversion, sole of the foot faces medially. Now let us go to the 
wrist joint which is also called radiocorpal joint the various possible moments at the wrist joint are flexion extension adduction and abduction and the combination of the, of the all these moments is called circumduction now what is flexion as shown in this diagram approximate angle between the flexor surfaces of is is around 180 degree in normal anatomical position what happens during flexion flexor surface approach each other and the angle of the joint decreases say it becomes 135 in contrast in extension the angle of the joint increases this angle is becoming 220 abduction is movement of the hand away from the median plane and adduction is movement of the hand towards the median plane as shown in this diagram adduction is movement of the hand towards the median plane and abduction is movement of the hand away from the median plane what is circumduction circumduction is defined as combination of all moments for example in the shoulder joint the moment is possible are flexion extension abduction adduction and combination of all these moments is called circumduction same is true of the hip joint now let us describe these anatomical terms interior interior means inside or internal for example interior of the heart this is the interior of right ventricle exterior exterior means outside or on the surface for example on the exterior surface of the heart in this diagram you can see veins of the heart which are located on the exterior surface of the heart same is true of the arteries of the heart which are located on the exterior surface of heart now what are directional terms directional terms describe positions of structures related to other structures or locations in the body for example heart lies in the chest cavity between the lungs liver lies in the abdominal cavity below the right dome of diaphragm we are describing location of the liver and it is relation with the right dome of the diaphragm liver is the largest intraperitoneal gland right dome of diaphragm is located superior or cranial to the liver so we are describing position of right dome of diaphragm in relation to the liver or liver is located inferior to the right dome of diaphragm for inferior we can also use the term caudal below the right dome of diaphragm so in this diagram we can see liver is located in the abdominal cavity inferior to the right dome of the diaphragm or we can say right dome of diaphragm lies superior to the liver superior is also called the cranial which means towards the head end of the body for example we say that hand is part of superior extremity that is upper limb and foot is part of inferior extremity that is lower limb posterior which is also called a dorsal for example the shoulder blades are located on the posterior side of body and pectoris major muscle is located on anterior side of the body posterior is also called dorsal in embryology and quadrupedis different terminology is used for example dorsal is used in a state of posterior ventral is used in a state of anterior cranial which means towards the head or cephal is used in a state of superior and caudal is used in a state of inferior anterior in the anatomical terminology means towards the front for example rectus abdominis is located anteriorly posterior refers towards the back for example latissimus dorsi is a muscle of back cranial means towards the head or it is also called superior caudal is also called inferior it means towards the feet or in embryology it means towards the tail when we keep our arms in normal anatomical position and compare the distance between little finger and thumb from the median plane we can say little finger is medial to thumb or thumb is lateral to little finger remember when using this terminology you have to presume that body or its parts are in normal anatomical position whether you are describing angles of a joint there also you have to presume 
that the part or the body is in normal anatomical position. So lateral means away from midline. Lateral border of arm is, is at a greater distance from the median plane than medial border of arm as shown in this diagram. As already said, to give an example, thumb is lateral to little finger and little finger is medial to thumb in normal anatomical position. In this diagram, we can say ulna is medial bone of forearm and radius is lateral bone of forearm. Here we again keep in mind the distance from the median plane. If we talk about the supraclavicular nerves, there are three supraclavicular nerves. And if we take into account their distance from the median plane, x, y, we name them as lateral, that is most away from the medial plane, intermediate and medial. Medial is nearest to the median plane, intermediate is between medial and lateral, and lateral is most away from the median plane. What is proximal and distal? Proximal means nearest to the trunk. In this diagram, you can say, if we take our digits, in middle phalanx, there are three digits. We name them as proximal, middle, and distal. Proximal means it is nearest to the supine, and distal means it is away from the supine, as shown in this diagram. Now, if we take these joints into consideration, knee joint, it is formed by the distal end of the femur and proximal end of tibia, keeping in view their distance from the supine. Same is true of the elbow joint. It is formed by the distal end of the humerus and proximal end of radius and ulna. There are three joints between radius and ulna, superior radio ulnar joint, middle radio ulnar joint, and inferior radio ulnar joint. The superior radio ulnar joint is formed between proximal end of radius and ulna. Inferior radio ulnar joint is formed between the distal end of radius and ulna and middle radio ulnar joint lies between proximal and distal. It is formed by interosseous membrane. Now if we take a section of corpus, there are two rows of carpal bones. One we called as proximal which is nearest to the supine. There are four bones in it, scaphoid, lunate, tricuteral and pisiform. In the distal row again there are four bones and these four bones are trapezium, trapezoid, captate and hamate. So proximal is nearest to the supine and distal is away from the supine. Now let us go for a quiz based on this lecture. Wrong statement about anatomical position of body is face is directed forwards, upper limbus hang by the side of body, palm is directed backwards, little finger lies medially. Palm is directed backwards is the wrong statement. In anatomical position, we presume that limbs are hanging by the side of the body palm faces anteriorly or forwards. mid sagittal plane divides body into two halves, two symmetrical halves, two identical halves, two equal halves. B is the correct option. Which of the following terms is used to indicate distance from trunk? Proximal, superior, inferior, medial. Proximal is the correct option. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe my channel, press on the bell icon to remain updated about more video uploads.